You're listening to the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. In today's publishing landscape, you can reach fans all over the world. Query letters are a thing of the past. You don't even need a literary agent. There is nothing standing in the way of making a living from writing. Join two best-selling authors who have self-published more than 20 books between them. Now, on to the show with your hosts, Autumn Burt and Jasper Schmidt. Hello, I'm Jasper. And I'm Autumn. This is episode 141 of the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. And uh, are you ready for another top 10 episode today, Autumn? Well, actually, it's been a little hot and sweltering and humid. I mean, it feels like I just got dumped into Costa Rica uh, without the beach. (laughs) So I can't say I have a highly competitive edge, unless maybe it's a lay on the beach and drink a beer contest. So... (laughs) <laughs> I'll do my best. I, I did not bring my game face this one. I'm sure you did because I you thrive off of competition, I think. <laughs> well, at least we're going to try to have a bit of fun today here and <laughs> exactly. each share our list of the five worst powers a character could have. And then, as usual, we'll need to see if we can agree on who had the best worst list in the end. And agreeing on who won is usually the hardest part of these episodes. Well, no, you always think you won, but I always know I did. So I that's what I mean. Good. We can't agree. <laughs> we agree. We both feel that way. <laughs> we can agree that each of us won. Yes. But, uh, exactly. and then sometimes somebody on Patreon are the ones who, who do the tie breaking. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes I put on YouTube videos. So we we do take votes. Um, I don't think it's ever changed how we felt we did, but we try. <laughs> well, usually if they do conclude that they think I won, then I definitely agree with them. And then I think it, it's very, very wise people voting in that, those cases. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I think I've had more votes than you. So I think they are very wise. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think so. You see, already we're disagreeing. <laughs> well, maybe I have more competition in me than I thought, so we'll be good. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. <laughs> so how are things but, uh, so over you... on your side of the planet? No, it's 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 good. Um, we actually started, uh, well, we talked about this a bit offline, but uh, we did uh, start looking yeah. at a house. Um, because there's just not enough space in this apartment. I mean, the location of this apartment, it's its like 200 right meters the from the beach. beach so yeah. it's a wonderful location, but it's just, it's too small mm, for the four of us. Um, so we, yeah, we started looking at, at some new houses um, and we found one that is newly renovated. It was uh, completely overhauled about a year ago. So it, it looks really nice. Nice. Um, and we were out looking at it last week, and mm-hmm. we felt like, ah, oh, this is quite good. Um, the price on the house is quite high, so we want that, of course, reduced. Um, but just to be on the safe side, we we hired a building inspector, uh, and we went out right. with him the other day to yeah. just go through the house and just check if there's nothing. Uh along with it some hidden stuff that you don't know about (laughs) and those kind of interesting things yeah some of my favorite parts of looking at houses yeah but he found mold in the attic oh no and he found the fact that the um i don't know what the correcting this term is but basically not the roof but like the inner inner structure of the roof Mm -hmm. he said it's done Oh, um, really? The actual like yeah, he, the supports the trusses or just the, the yeah. like plywood? Oh, the, so the uh, no, the, the supporting structure. Oh, so he said it, it's it's, <laughs> it's uh, there's mold in it, and uh, there, he even found water on some of the supporting beans. So oh. it's it, it's a matter of time before you have water pouring in from the roof. He said. I mean, yeah. the only thing that keeps out the water right now is the uh, the tiles on the roof. So, uh-huh. but if they start. Yeah, you know, leaking or something, then it's going to go straight into the house. Oh, so that's of course a huge issue. Yeah. Um, but it's it's fixable, but it's expensive. The building inspector mm-hmm. said that he estimated it to cost about sixty thousand dollars to fix. So it's not a small expense. 
No. Um, but we are actually thinking to put in an offer, but of course we need to have a significant price reduction to counter for this. Uh, but we haven't put in the offer yet, so and I don't know <laughs> how the selling party will react to... We're going to ask for a huge price reduction, right? Yeah. So I don't know how they'll react to that, and maybe... I don't know. We'll see what happens next. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's where we're at. <laughs> that's way more exciting on the house front than I expected. That's really crazy. <laughs> Having built and restored houses, yeah, the roof and the foundation are like two of the places you don't want problems. So, oof. No, indeed. But the, I mean, the building inspector said, he says that like this is what he sees all the time because people are so <laughs> fixated on isolating houses so they just keep isolating more and more and more more stuff uh, to make it so tight and tight and tight box as yeah. they can uh, but nobody ever thinks about then you still need to ensure that there is ventilation yeah but they never do that and he says he said he sees it so many places and then you know a year or two later then the structure up there it's wet it's moldy because yeah. of all the condensed that is uh, created as well and uh, yeah. yeah then it's destroyed that's very true. So oh, I don't know. Yes. But apparently, like ventilation, it's not something people think about for some oh, reason. That's, Which is a I, shame because it's, it's, like I said, it's completely renovated like a year ago. So it's really a shame. Yeah, that is really a shame. But yeah, I mean, it's funny. The green houses and stuff. I mean, you want a good insulated core because it's easier to heat or keep cool. But yeah, I mean, some of the best houses I knew, one of them had a um, whole house turnover where they had a fan in the attic that could actually exchange all the air with outside air like open up all the bottom windows yeah it was like yeah. five minutes i was like okay that's a little intense a half an hour would have probably done fine but he was like <laughs> okay hot air's out i was just like wow you're you're into ventilation no more than i expect <laughs> that's a little extreme <laughs> yeah oh, yeah geez. anything uh exciting going on on you in Oh, well, one thing I'm going to share with you in, in when we talk about internet, which I actually meant to share last time, but I'm kind of glad I waited. I have a, I have, I have a show and tell, but, uh, well, yeah. So right now I can say two Ooh. big things have happened. So one is my husband is up in Maine and I wanted to give a shout out to him because he passed his um, main guide, which is a registered main guide. It's actually the oldest guide license in the United States and one of the hardest to get. And he just passed his sea kayaking test. So he is now a registered main guide for sea kayaking, recreation, nice. uh, whitewater. I just, he's got a ton of them now. So I really kind of tickle that he's doing so well up there. So shout out to him for being awesome. And then the other That's thing. That's so nice. It is. I'm so excited for him. He, he's up there obviously guiding right now and in high demand so i'm quite happy for him he's actually as we speak he is leading a <laughs> moose tour um hopefully on the canoe off looking for moose in the wilds of maine i think that's not a bad nice. job description yeah I, I i need to maybe rethink doing that a little bit every once in a while to get my license too oh uh, and then the other thing I, well I, in your world uh <laughs> yeah in, in your world, dragons exist. That's better than mooses. True. We go looking for dragons as well as moose, maybe. <laughs> it could be fun. <laughs> yeah. But then I wanted to let people know if I actually started a new exercise program, which shouldn't be as exciting as it is, but I know there's got to be other people in the world who, um, one, just feel they're busy all the time. And for me to go to a gym is like a half an hour drive, not even counting like the time to exercise and then come back. So I don't have two hours a day to do this. So it's been such a struggle. And I actually just found a new online program that's from home and it's called um, High Intensity Interval Training. So HIT, H-I-I-T. And I'd never heard of it before. And oh my God, it's awesome. Um, cause I also get bored really easy if no one has realized that here <laughs> yet. I don't know. I'm good at writing books, but, um, you know, put me on a treadmill for 20 minutes and I would rather jump off a cliff. And actually I would love to jump off a cliff. Give me a squirrel suit and I would so <laughs> jump off a cliff. Not a problem. But oh exercise? No. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but this is great because it's like literally 20 seconds. Uh, some of them do it for one minute on and one minute off, but I'm on one where it's 20 seconds for three different exercises in a row. So it's 20, 20, 20, one minute break, 20, 20, 20, one minute break. I didn't know you could get so tired in 18 minutes, <laughs> but it's fantastic. So if anyone else right. is out there and they don't have time to go yeah. to the gym and they want to exercise, look up HIIT training or send me a message. It's I'll tell you which program I joined. It was like 50 bucks. It's a diet plan as well as an exercise plan. And I feel fantastic. And it's been seven days. And you can combine it with the uh, Habit RPG app that I mentioned last week oh, as well. That's then you're right. really flying. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. A week on the internet with the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. So you have something to share first uh, before I just do a little speech here afterwards. All right. <laughs> yes, I meant this is not... Well, it has something to do with fantasy, but not with writing this time, unless you're talking about book covers. But I'm actually teaching a class on photo compositing, which is how I make all my covers, if anyone's a fan of my work. And as I just put on Instagram, there's nothing more fun than show and tell. So I actually did my book covers in posters for uh, for the course. So if anyone is watching on YouTube, you get to see the pictures. But um, I was just so nice. thrilled. They just came today. This is the secret one. I don't think I've even shown you this one. This is for an author. I just... Uh, was started working with about I a month keep it, ago. I keep it on the camera a, li- a bit longer. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's difficult too much fun. To... Well, especially because I have the light glaring on it. But uh, yeah. that's for, it's called the Silver Web. That was a fantastic nice. one. But yeah, so I just did four cover, four pictures. So I'm so excited. They're going to be shown in a gallery. And then I'll be teaching a photo compositing course in October. So if anyone else is in New England in the Brattleboro, Vermont area, and they want to know how to, to make covers through photo compositing or just fun crap in photo compositing, um, look up <laughs> the Vermont Center for Photography and you can see the course I'm teaching and I cannot wait. It'll be so much fun. Oh, nice. Cool. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I checked earlier this morning and it's uh, been quite a while since we had anyone leaving a review of the podcast. Oh. So I just wanted to mention that we would love to have more people find us. And one of the best ways is if this podcast uh, gets some reviews that will trigger the algorithms that suggest our podcast to new listeners and it'll basically become easier to find us. So just a small request to our dear listeners here. If you can please go into your podcast app and leave a rating of the podcast or even better, write just a short review. You could just uh, say something about why you listen and what you get from this podcast. And that would be tremendously helpful for us. So it will only take you probably 30 seconds. So uh, if you can please help us with that one, we would be so happy. We would definitely appreciate it. (laughs) And on to today's topic. All right, right. so (laughs) I think once in a while one can dream about having like superpowers. Yeah. But the thing is, what if you got the lamest and most ridiculous powers of them all? (laughs) This was a fun one to think about and research. I did do a little bit of research, but I also tried to come up with some sort of original (laughs) ones. But yeah, I, I went to at the end, I found a list and we'll have to see if you found the same list. But it it was huge. It was probably over fifty or sixty ones, and they were hilarious. I found some of those as well. Yeah, yeah, they were just. Um, I it was yeah, they were just fun to take a break and read through them. So this was kind of fun one to do. It'll be interesting to see which ones you came up with, and I take it we're going to go from least worst to worst worst. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Yes, let's do that. And as usually when we do these top 10 lists, uh, let's alternate okay. uh, sharing one of the worst powers each and then we'll <laughs> empty out our lists and then we'll need to see who actually won here. All right. So, I mean, I did some internet research like you uh, and all of my ones here are not, let's say, something I just made up. It's actually something that exists oh. because I thought that was quite funny be- to have some some 
some stuff that exists <laughs> out there, uh, but it's just completely ridiculous. <laughs> oh, this will be interesting. Some of mine were based on it, but actually most of mine were just ones I thought, kind of my opinion, that I thought this one would really suck. So <laughs> it'll right, be cool. interesting to see what we have and we have any overlap. And uh, yeah. yeah, that'll be that'll be telling. <laughs> I've, yeah, absolutely. And it's been too long right, since so... we did this. I don't remember who went yeah. first the last time. We should have brought a coin. No, I was just about anything. to say as well. I don't remember. Oh. Hmm. Um. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, I think I said that last time as well. I don't know if it's best to go first or last. It depends on how much confidence one has in, in, in my own list here. Uh, mm. Well, if you're not ready, you know I'm never afraid to jump in. So. I can go. Okay, cool. Go. <laughs> All right. So my what would be number five, my least worst power <laughs> that I thought would really suck to have is the power of nullifying. So this would be that you don't really have any other spells that you can cast, no magic you can throw, but you can break anyone else's. I just think that would really suck. You'd see these people doing these marvelous, amazing spells, and you're basically this like seething, angry person going, break, break. Just You're the downer. <laughs> you're the downer in the room. I just thought that would really just not feel fulfilling at all for a magic power. <laughs> no, that's true. But of course, if you are fighting like Sauron or something, then it ah. would be quite nice to nullify his powers. That would be. I have to admit, I didn't think about it in terms of fighting. I just thought of it as terms of every day. So, well, it was my least worst, but yeah, it would be very. That'd be the the person you want by your side during a fight. Yeah, you, for sure. Be my shield maiden I, any I'm day. I'm pretty sure the <laughs> the the warrior of the party definitely want want this uh, guy or woman next to him for sure. Yeah, best friend, <laughs> <laughs> besties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just stand there. Don't say anything. Just stand there and just nullify. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a shout out at the end. You know, yeah, great. Yeah, you'll get you'll get a grapefruit for for the work. Oh, Here you go, eat a grape. Oh, jeez, <laughs> that would be sucky. <laughs> you made it worse. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you want my number five? Yeah, here? I want your number five. Okay, so my first entry actually comes from the DC comic books. Okay. <laughs> And uh, this superhero is always willing to lend a hand to anyone in need. Okay. Mm. That doesn't sound so bad. That sounds good, right? Yeah. Well, not when you learn that this is the arm fall off boy. What? <laughs> Seriously, this, is, this has to be one of the worst superpowers ever. Because this superhero, he can detach his arm. <laughs> Oh. Why? <laughs> Does it wiggle around? <laughs> That's exactly my thinking. That's exactly my thinking. Why? Why? Who came up with that? Were they drunk? Uh, I, I mean, why would that ever be useful? I, so I, can you do something with this? Or like beat a villain over the Yeah, head? I guess you can use it as a club or something. And just uh, beat the su uh, super villain in his head with your arm or something. But you could do that anyway. You don't need yeah. to detach your arm to do that. It's called a fist. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just stupid. <laughs> I don't even... Yes. <laughs> why? Even as a writing the... standpoint, I just... Why? The arm fall off boy. That's what he's called. I am I can see why I gave up on comic books when I did. <laughs> it's really <laughs> horrible. Is that modern or is this... Like something from like the forties or something. Uh, I, I don't know how old he is, but uh, I guess people can Google that. But uh, yeah. but that that was only my number five, so you can see okay. where this is going now. Yeah, I see you. You you found inspiration pretty heavily. I should get points for at least coming up with my own and not true. Just, you know, yes. pulling off of a uh, comic somewhere. But that one is. I don't even know how that made. I mean, I can see someone spitting that out as a writer, saying, "Hey, we need a blah blah blah." <laughs> yes. But it should have been cut before it ever made it into a plot. I mean, really? Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes zero sense. It 
does. This is why yeah. if you're a writer and you're really stumbling for ideas, stop and think before you create something this bad, okay? Please. <laughs> Get a beta reader. <laughs> Just trust me. Okay. Yeah. All right, you number from my And come up with one? a better name than Arm Fall Off Boy. Yeah, yeah, can we go for literal naming here? <laughs> Seriously. I, Jonathan would be better. Just, just come on. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, Adam the Arm. Oh, yeah. That's that's too close to. Isn't there Adam the <laughs> Ant? I don't I'm too close. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. Okay, number four. Number four. This is one I actually, I think I vaguely remember from a Star Trek episode, but it's it was sort of a power that came around in the 80s, I heard a couple places, but it's empathetic healing. So you can, the wielder can heal anyone, but only by taking the injury into themselves. So, you know, if it's a cut, they, they get the cut. If right. you know they were stabbed in the kidney, they're now stabbed in the kidney. You know, the other person's dying of cancer. Well, now you're dying of cancer. It's really i mean it's a self-sacrificing sort of ability and i just thought you know that's great you can save your teammate from dying if you die i'm not into self-sacrificing but you I can guess. only do it once i only can do it once i mean it's fine if you're like just cutting scrapes but then you're got a cut that you've got to heal and maybe get infected I think that's just no <laughs> i don't want that power if that's my only magic i think i'd rather not have magic uh, it, the chance of doing of he, not yeah. knowing someone was sick with something horrible and healing them and then being sick with something horrible i mean ooh. oh my god yeah <laughs> no yeah. all right that yeah that would be bad yeah that i think the consequences mm. it's yeah i can see that that uh... oh well thank you i'm glad you agree that one kind of sucks no yeah that's uh, yeah, I agree. It sucks. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, what's your number four? Okay, number four. Yes. Uh, I'll admit that there could be certain and probably like very specific situations where this superpower could be somewhat useful. All right. But once you hear what it is, I think you would prefer to. Like Never you said before, almost have no superpower instead. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. So, are you familiar with Marvel Star Fox? Vaguely. I can't remember the details, but I know I've heard the name. So, Star Fox, has, he has the power to excite pleasure in others. Which <laughs> basically means that he can make people <laughs> fall madly in love with him. All and, right. Uh, I mean, f for us regular people, you might you might be able to think of some sort of situation where you think that could be useful for your benefit in one way or another. Uh, it's still quite nefarious, I guess. But but as a superhero, I mean, are you going to go out fighting crime by having all the bad guys fall in love with you? I mean, I just don't understand how it's is that helpful for a superhero. It's very efficient, just like everyone does. I mean, I, I agree. As a villain, I mean, you can go get the people who have tons of money and power and just have them want to give everything to you. It's fantastic. Easy. Yeah. But as a hero, I mean, by definition, you shouldn't be using and manipulating people. So, yeah, unless you're going to go make all the villains fall in love with you and Dr. Doom is not going to <laughs> annihilate everyone on the planet because then he might kill you. Oh, <laughs> and then you have then you have all the bad guys in in the world running around in your heels like after you because they all want to be with you. It's just like oh my god, I, mean, well, I don't you, understand how that is very helpful. You can play them off of each other, so you just get oh you know he likes me better than you. That's so just you mean. <laughs> well, you have to now you're just mean. <laughs> well, that's my secret. I'm actually a cruel person underneath it all. I guess. <laughs> oh, or at least I'm cool yeah, to my characters. Yeah, I can see that in the stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have no problem being mean to characters. That's that's true. I... No. Yeah, I think I would have to go with becoming a supervillain if that was my power. I mean, maybe I'd try to find some good to do with it. Get lots of philanthropy going, I guess. Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're grasping at straws. Now. I am. I'm thinking, okay, if you can make Bezos fall in love with you and donate his millions like his ex-wife, the world would be a better place. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. All right. You want my number three then? Yeah. All right. I don't have a good lead up to this one. This one was kind of I did it came to me and I thought of the more of the consequences of this one. It's sort of the opposite of my number 5. So this one is the power of permanence. So any spell you cast, okay. let's say you can do anything, can't be undone and mm -hmm. will last forever. So if you change a bird that just right. fell off a cliff or change your friend who just fell off a cliff into a bird, they will always be a bird. You cannot change them back. So if you people are starving, so you get, make plants grow, they're just going to keep growing and producing fruit. And like two hundred two two centuries from now, you know there'll be a whole city built up around your magic tree that never stops producing fruit. If you make it rain, it's going to be raining in uh -huh. that spot forever, and just be flooding forever. <laughs> forever. You can't undo the spell. So yeah, okay. Well, actually, <laughs> this could lead some <laughs> to some interesting scenarios. So if you made it rain, and then it, you know, it's gonna rain forever. So you start building like, then you make a, you know, don't, don't know, like a lava pool or something. I don't know. And then oh shit, no, that that's not gonna work. So you build some. You just keep adding new magical effects to try to nullify the other one. <laughs> it's just gonna be worse and worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> the consequences of this one would just be a nightmare. I mean, it could be quite fun to write maybe a really short story on like how sucky this would be. You're going to eventually just trap yourself almost with everything. You're going to have to be to make actually to that's do one not a thing. bad idea. <laughs> I'm glad yeah, you like it. <laughs> that's actually a good uh, short story idea. I think. All right, well. that's quite cool. I, there you go. If you want to write a, short, a little Vela story for you, uh, there you have. But yeah, I think I mean, eventually you'd be like, you'd be, be afraid cool. to do anything. You'd be like thinking through all the potentials yeah. of if I actually do this, what's going to happen? And then you have those gut instinct ones where it's like, I'm going to save my friend. Now my friend is a seagull. Shit. <laughs> 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 and like, and then you feel bad about he, him being a seagull. So how can I make it happen? Well, I should probably just make sure there's lots of fish for him, and then and then there's fish <laughs> everywhere, and there's no one. Oh shit, this is not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have too many cats. will come for the fish. And, yeah, 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 indeed. <laughs> well, you should put that on one of your sticky notes, uh, or okay. uh, for a Vela story, because All that's right, well, actually a good idea. It would be fun. All right. Well, I already have it as a sticky note. I'll move it to the Vela. I story idea sticky note. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I think glad that's, I... that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm glad you like that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, my number three is not going to make it into a short story for sure. <laughs> Probably should not have made it into a comic, I'm guessing. <laughs> Yeah, well, I just had to include this one on my list, to be honest. He, okay. uh, this character comes from Hit, the Hitman series. Okay. And he's a member of something called Section 8, which mm. is like a group of superheroes. Okay. Well, that part doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'll give you his name and then see if you can guess what his superpower is, Autumn. Okay. Are you ready? Uh-huh. He's called Dark Welder. Hmm? <laughs> what do you think that me. is? Please tell me he does not weld dogs together. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, but his ability is that he can weld the heads of dogs onto faces of evildoers. Ta-da! Were the dogs real dogs and were living and are now dead? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But... No. How is that going to achieve anything to just weld a dog's head onto somebody? I don't understand how that's going to help anything. Well, if it changes the villain's personality and they're now got a dog brain, <laughs> maybe they'll stop doing what they were doing. But I just see lots of innocent animals being killed here. <laughs> yeah. I don't like this one. <laughs> How is that a superhero power? It, it sounds evil. It sounds horrible. I, I, 
Oh, glad my dog is asleep. I think you'd give him nightmares. I don't like this one. It's <laughs> horrible. It's not only stupid, but it's just mean. I don't believe in cruelty to animals. And you're the vegetarian. Jeez. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm vegan even. <laughs> That's right. Jeez. Oh, I don't like that one. No. Yeah. All right. I, I agree. I don't see how that's... No. I would have to read the comic book episode, but why turning someone in, someone's head no, into a dog? Really. Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> Make him at least a but fish. Honestly, I wouldn't even want to read that. I know. It's just, you know, if you made him a fish head, at least they would have to oh like jump God. into the water so they can breathe. I mean, this is... Why? Yeah. Again, another one that should yeah. not have made it off the creative table. Just the brainstorming session that day was really bad, <laughs> <laughs> really, really bad. They uh, must have been, yeah, they must have been drunk. Or something. Maybe all of these came out of the same writing room, like they were at a Christmas party and everybody was drunk on eggnog or something, and I'm thinking like for they this came one, up with all this stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking they might have been doing LCD, L LSD, sorry, LSD for this one. LSD. Yeah. <laughs> I, someone had a little bit too much of something and saw a bad vision and they thought it sounded really cool, but it did not translate well. <laughs> no, agree. It's just too weird. <laughs> that is just really horrible. All right, but we're getting to the top of the list now. We are. I'm ready for my number two. So you're ready? All right. All right. So this one is... The power, which I actually did get inspired by um, by one of those posts, but this one is the power of imperceptibility. So this, in other words, you are immediately forgotten as soon as you leave like the person's vision. So it doesn't matter how cool huh. of anything you do. You just, you're never remembered. You know, heroes want to be remembered. I mean, that's half the, you know, the superhero, the whole, like, nine yards, the suit. You want to be remembered. You're this brand. But instead, no matter what you do, as soon as you leave the room, everyone forgot, forgets that you are the one who did it. So, like, your friends, the other people on the team, they're all going to get the accolades. And everyone's going to forget you even exist. Not to mention just, like, the problems, like, can you even have a long-term relationship or do you even have friends? Because no, you can't. No one remembers you're real. I just, I can't imagine the loneliness of this kind of a power that you could yeah. be the most marvelous yeah. character. You could have godlike abilities, but everyone would think it was God. They wouldn't think it was you. <laughs> yeah. I think if you, if you were a villain, Mm -hmm. I mean, at least if you could just have the power for one week, that, that <laughs> might be nice. You know, you could go right. and steal a lot of money and everything and nobody will know that it was you anyway. They all forgotten about you. But to have that, even as a villain for life, your entire life, it's going to be very lonely. <laughs> very lonely. That's and yeah. very just it's very, actually a bit sad. It is. It's a very sad one. I mean, it hurt as an individual. It hurt your ego. You'd be lonely. Uh, no connections. I mean, if you love someone and fell in love, you would have to make sure they stayed. You know, you stayed in their line of sight forever. And uh, let's just assume <laughs> that blinking doesn't count. Let's just, just just you know presence or maybe twenty foot vicinity or something. I mean, the stress of that. Well, talk about writing for tension, though. But I mean... also, yeah. But also think about how annoying it would be for the other person. You're always there like, look at me, look at me. No, no, don't look away. Look at me. All the time. It's so annoying. <laughs> I would be like, yeah, I, I just want to go, you know, shower by myself or go out with the girls. Or... And <laughs> so, no, 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 I'm coming. always got to go with you. <laughs> And yeah. would you believe them? I mean, that's just it. You have no proof other than, you know, watching with friends or something. I guess you could you could prove it that way by having a friend come in and have, you know, that person walk out of the room and come back in like, oh, who are you? Why are you here with my best friend? You know, oh, it would just be. Weird. But you don't have a friend. Well, I you mean, can't even have a friend. So nobody... your significant other, like say you did find that one who didn't want to leave your site and just the test you could do, like you could have another, a third person walk in the room and just be like, ah, I didn't even know you were there just to prove that it really is truly will happen that way. I don't know. I mean, you're either going to oh be considered God. insane or they're not going to consider you at all. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, that that's uh that's sad. Okay. To be honest. You think that one's sad? Wait till my number one. Oh, oh my god, okay. <laughs> All right, what's your number two? Uh, yeah, my number two is not sad, it actually made me laugh instead. Okay. So this character is a member of the Great Lakes Avengers. Okay. That sounds pretty cool, or or maybe actually I'm not so sure. I'm not Why so is there sure Avengers either. of the Great Lake? I don't I don't know. <laughs> no, I was like, are they just located in the US with the Great Lakes and they don't go any further? Or it's a, it's a small team. Anyway, they don't not yeah, global. It's a small not a global team. reach, yeah. Okay. No, indeed. But this superhero, <laughs> he can transform himself into a door. And then he can let other characters walk through him into an adjoining room. Hmm? What do you, you just, think about that? Can't you just use the door? <laughs> Assuming that, <laughs> unless maybe the door is locked, and this way you don't have to worry about unlocking it. Like, if you forgot your key, you'd be so useful. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> if it was like... You could walk through him, and then you could like teleport somewhere. Yeah, then it would be pretty great. damn cool. Yeah. But the thing is that you can only go into an adjoining room, and that's pretty lame. Yeah. And uh, also, he's called Doorman. Oh. <laughs> they really need to work on some of these names. <laughs> yes. That's. Yeah, you know, a chainsaw works pretty well, too, if you don't already have a door. <laughs> um, a sledgehammer? Yeah, sledgehammer. A door actually works. A window. Uh, they could have called him Window <laughs> Man. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, short of wanting to be, again, a mm. villain, that way you could just lean against the bank vault and just, like, zoom, you know, in and out. Great yeah, but you, have to, but you have to, you have to get to the wall that is around the bank vault. Otherwise, it doesn't help anything. Right? And he can't go through his own doorway, I take it. That would be too easy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think he, he people can go through him but he into the next go. room. Right? Yeah. What's the point? I would be <laughs> there so is no point. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like a novelty trick. I I can see the kids going, you know, he's like showing off saying, hey, look, you can go through me through as a door. And, you know, just some bully going, I can use the door <laughs> and I don't yeah. need you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Short of locking my keys out of the house or the, does it work for cars? You know, that would be useful. Um, otherwise, mm, probably. Yeah. I, he I mean, could, he could he could have a job as a locksmith. I was just gonna say he would have a great job as like for people who have lost their keys and need to get into some place. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, yeah, not too useful, really. Other, uh, no, otherwise he's just gonna be that really annoying guy at the party who's like, "Are you going to the bathroom? Hey, wait, wait, wait! Let me, let me. You can walk through me." It's like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, please, I, please do, please walk through me. <laughs> I just be like, ew. I see why he didn't make it to like one of the big leagues um of superheroes. Yeah. Because really Well, you'll never know with all the those Marvel and you know my opinion about Marvel and DC, so I would not be yeah. surprised if you find him in a superhero movie theater near you sometime in the near future. <laughs> I do not miss going to the movies anymore. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just go read a book or write a book that doesn't have really lame superheroes. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Are you ready for my worst power? My number one. My number one. Yes. The tragic. And this one I just wrote. Oh, it's four four words long. Anything you touch okay. dies. Um, it's a power I would assume dude, that it, it it didn't happen at obviously until after birth let's hope because that would really that wouldn't have worked uh, very well yeah but do you have to touch it with your skin or can you put on gloves and then nothing happens I would assume skin I think we'll go with that <clears throat> so yeah you would be you would have to be always covered in gloves or latex or something so that you're yeah. not physically touching anyone. But yeah. again, the, the the stress of this one, my goodness, if you get a hole in your glove and then you 
grab your best friend's hand or yeah, you know, it just, another isolating one where this one's not quite as isolating as the other one, but the results, instead of just being forgotten, you actually could kill people you really care about. And I think I would rather yeah, have the uh, power. Even when, well, y- y- what if you accidentally touched yourself? I would assume, I think I will have to grant immunity. I do. Some of the r- lists I read were, um, I remember one of them was, you know, you weren't, um, a lot of them were like, you were not immune to the dire things that you could do. Like if you sweat acid, but it, you're not immune to it. That would really suck as a power. Um, I don't know what the point would be. Cause you'd slowly, you'd dissolve yourself as so first, the second you worked out or something, you would slowly melt. That would be horrible. But I thought this one yeah. just, yeah, you're immune to it. You can't kill yourself, but you know, anything else you accidentally, you can't touch a dog. You can't touch a butterfly. Can't touch a plant. Nothing. You only can eat, touch anything you touch has to be already be dead or you will kill it, which at least, you know, great for sanitation. If you needed to like clean a whole bunch of water, just touch it. Um, it'll always be pure. <laughs> <laughs> just drop them as a major yeah, so filter. It's like a, it's the Aquaman, basically. Yeah. A, a whole new level of Aquaman. A Brita. He's just a filter. <laughs> and let him otherwise just leave him alone. Don't let him touch anything or anyone. It'd just be horrible. If he fell in the ocean, yeah. I wonder how big of an impact it would have to things around him. It's just Yeah, true. Just yeah. No, that that would be pretty bad. I mean at least but at least you can you know, wear gloves and try to prevent it. But of yeah. course the problem is if you go let's say you go you go to the airport and airport security says, Sir, <laughs> remove your gloves. Uh no, I'm not gonna <laughs> remove your gloves, sir, or I'll do it for you. Oh. No, no, please don't. <laughs> it's like I will remove them just I don't touch me. <laughs> I just the stress yeah. of it. I talk about it'd be like anxiety, man, if you had a name of it, it just would be bad. It's so bad. Yeah. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. I'll Nothing. give you that. that right. That's not that's not a good situation to be no. in. I thought that would really be a second. And again, but power. I, I mean, I'm sensing a bit of a theme here, Autumn, because you keep coming up with something where people would be very lonely and isolated and it, I don't know what's going on here. Well, those are obviously this this is a a list of the worst things I can imagine. Obviously, being alone and isolated are on the top of my list of yeah, not okay, a great way fair. to be. How's that? Okay. All right. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I just keep coming up with all the useless stuff instead. And this one <laughs> is 100% completely, utterly useless. Oh, so right. I, I'm trying okay. to imagine <laughs> what this one is. Uh, you will never guess it. Probably not. I'm thinking like you can magically mix cocktails, but that could actually be fun. <laughs> no, that could be useful good for parties but <laughs> the number one on my list is one where and keep in mind that we are talking in the context of a superhero here okay um so that's why it's so useless right i mean if you were a priest or a preacher or something then maybe you could use the skill all right, all right. but this be interesting the character is called bible man <laughs> and he actually even got his own video game. What? Mm. All yes. right. <laughs> and his superpower is to know the Bible by heart. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm speechless. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's his superpower. Like a good memorization and. Which edition of the Bible? I mean, like the original, that could at least be kind of interesting. Or you're talking about like the King James. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. But he just knows the Bible by heart and he knows every phrase and every line by heart and he can recite the whole thing. So I guess if you're a preacher, that would be nice. Well, but as a superhero, I have no idea how that will be helpful. Unless you're fighting demons, I can't imagine. Or trying to make the angels like really like, oh wow, you're you're good. <laughs> wow, <laughs> he's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Angel brownie points, ding. <laughs> but, um, 
Why? I you're really gonna annoy annoy people, and you get into the wrong country where they're not Christian. You're you're gonna be up. I hope you can run fast. I mean, you're gonna really be in trouble. Um, it no? makes no sense. No. I mean, I really don't understand why that would be helpful at all. I'm but, guessing uh, a Christian yeah. white man came up with that one. I don't know why, but and maybe in like the fifties. Yeah, I don't know. This does not sound like he's a probably in the same writing room as. Yeah, he's in the same writing room as the other ones, I guess. Yeah, no. Um, this is not something I think that the world needs in 2021. <laughs> Even less than coronavirus, no. maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually have a. I have an honorable mention as well. Oh, I can't wait! It didn't make the top five. <laughs> No, but it was more like, um, because this is technically, I guess, not sort of a superpower in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, because the the character can actually, well, he can't use it on purpose. Oh. Uh, so it, in that sense, it doesn't feel like a superpower. But I, I just thought it was so incredibly stupid that I wanted to <laughs> <laughs> mention to it mention anyway. Here. Okay. Yeah. So this is a character called Sabu. And uh, Sabu, he's part of an Indian comic book. Uh-huh. And he is a giant from the planet Jupiter. Okay. And his power is that whenever he gets angry, mm-hmm. a volcano on Jupiter erupts. <laughs> so <laughs> setting off volcanic eruptions might be pretty cool, I guess, but not when it's <laughs> on another planet. What's the... Why? <laughs> Just why? <laughs> I can't. I can you know. teleport the lava to like the whatever you're doing? I mean, Sabu, he he is on Earth. Yeah. And then when he gets angry, a volcano on the Jupiter. Jupiter erupts. Erupts. I mean, <laughs> what is the point? Who cares? <laughs> That'd be another one of like, hey, look, point this telescope or this satellite this way and watch this. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I just... Yeah. What's what I can do? Uh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I just... That one is probably one of the most pointless powers I can imagine. It's like saying, <laughs> hey, I've got the power of gravity. And you're like... I don't care unless I'm in deep space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. oh my right. god. Well. Okay, so let's just uh, summarize here before we conclude who had the worst list here. So on my list, I have um, the uh, Arm Fall Off Boy. <laughs> I have the Star Fox uh, who can excite pleasure in others. <laughs> and I have the dog welder, oh. <laughs> and then I have the doorman. Yeah, oh, geez. and then I have the Bible man. That's pretty bad. All right, mine were nullifying, empathetic healing, the power of permanence, um, impercept- imperceptibility, and then anything you touch dies. <laughs> Um, you would win the most useless power list, but I think for like truly worst consequences, I think I'm the winner there. Sorry. Yeah, no, I actually agree with that. I, well, I was thinking at same at the same. I mean, the most ridiculous and stupid powers. I think my list is is more oh. stupid than yours. But <laughs> yeah. if you want to have really really dire consequences and live the rest of your life alone or in isolation, then, then your <laughs> list is definitely worse. Thank you. Oh, I like torturing characters. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I guess it all comes down to uh, what the scope of this list actually was. And That's true. I guess we don't even know ourselves then. I guess not. <laughs> we were two different lists, but it was fun to go through. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay, so next Monday, we are going to share the best things you can do every day to become a better writer. So we'll see you then.
If you like what you just heard, there's a few things you can do to support the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. Please tell a fellow author about the show and visit us at Apple Podcast and leave a rating and review. You can also join Autumn and Jasper on Patreon.com slash Am Writing Fantasy. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get awesome rewards and keep the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast going. Stay safe out there and see you next Monday.